It started as another routine job for Jack Price, a seasoned private investigator. A mysterious client named Evelyn hired him to dig into the strange disappearances that shook the heart of the quiet town of Duskhaven. Locals feared the return of a legendary serial killer known as the Silent Spectre. Price traveled to Duskhaven, the gloomy town draped in a palpable layer of foreboding. He started by visiting the homes of the victims. Each residence held an uncanny similarity, a hollow echo of life interrupted, and a lingering scent of dread. A single clue was found at each scene, a small silver medallion with an etching of an owl, the alleged signature of the silent specter. Determined, Price delved into the town's archives. The silent specter's first reign of terror was decades ago, ending abruptly with no arrest. Reports detailed brutal murders, each victim left with a silver medallion. Price noticed an odd detail. The dates of the original murders aligned with lunar eclipses. As Price walked to his hotel, he felt the weight of unseen eyes on him. Duskhaven's streets were eerily quiet, as if the town itself held its breath, preparing for something terrible. The moon, nearing full, cast a haunting glow on the cobblestones. Back in his room, Price arranged the photographs of the latest victims. Suddenly, a realization chilled his spine. The dates of the recent murders also corresponded with lunar eclipses. The town was a day away from the next one. Price surmised that Evelyn was more than a concerned citizen. She was the bait, luring him into the specter's game. Price rushed to Evelyn's address. In the moonlit house he found a room filled with owl medallions. A sudden dread washed over him. Evelyn wasn't a victim, but the specter herself. The room chilled as he turned, facing Evelyn, who stood bathed in the silvery moonlight, an eerie smile playing on her lips. The full horror of his situation dawned on Price. He had walked into the lion's den. A struggle ensued. Evelyn possessed an uncanny strength, but Price was a seasoned brawler. He managed to subdue her momentarily, dialing the local police. Price then looked up to see the glint of a knife in Evelyn's hand. You're too late, Mr. Price. Evelyn's voice was eerily calm, the room bathed in the crimson light of the lunar eclipse. The specter's legacy continues. His fear was replaced with resolve. If he was to die, he'd take the monster down with him. They collided in a final fatal struggle just as the police arrived. The last thing Price remembered was the sight of Evelyn, the silent specter, falling to her demise. He lay amidst the chaos, weary but victorious, having bit off more than he could chew yet living to tell the tale. And so, Duskhaven's darkest secret was laid bare. Jack Price would forever be remembered as the man who unmasked the silent specter. He had stepped into the mouth of horror, chewed, and swallowed the terror. His experience became a chilling reminder that sometimes the hunt could turn one into the hunted, and the investigator into the bait. Martin O'Donnell had always been an ordinary man living an ordinary life. He was a cog in the great corporate machine, a man of routine and monotony. He resided in a typical suburban neighborhood, in a house with a white picket fence that represented a picturesque normality. But in recent months, he began to notice subtle, unexplainable changes in the world around him. It all started one day when Martin noticed his neighbor, Mr. Robinson, pruning a tree in his yard. The old man would snip a branch and the severed branch would instantly reappear, as though untouched. Startled, Martin blinked hard, rubbed his eyes, but the spectacle persisted. He chalked it up to fatigue and moved on. In the days that followed, the peculiarities grew. His colleagues would speak in bizarre riddles, their mouths forming words but the meanings were incongruous, even nonsensical. The familiar faces in town started morphing into grotesque, surreal caricatures of human beings. Newspapers reported incidents that didn't seem to happen, while real events were left unmentioned. Martin was gripped by an inexplicable terror. He began to think that he was living in a world gone mad. Was it a government experiment, some sort of global hallucinogen in the water? Was it an alien invasion manipulating their perceptions, preparing for conquest? Or was it something more sinister? an unholy apocalypse that distorted reality itself. As the insanity around him escalated, Martin became increasingly isolated, withdrawing from the mad, shifting world outside. He began to chronicle the bizarre happenings in a journal, an anchor to his sanity in the tumultuous sea of chaos. 
One night, as Martin was jotically recording the day's anomalies, he noticed a detail that struck him cold. The dates on the earlier entries were not sequential. There were gaps, jumps, and repetitions. Fear washed over him. Had he lost track of days? Or was time itself corrupted in this maddening reality? Then, amidst the despair and paranoia, a revelation struck Martin. What if the insanity didn't lie in the world around him, but within him? The thought was terrifying, but it was the only explanation that made sense. Could it be that he was the madman in a world of sanity? Desperate for clarity, Martin decided to seek professional help. Dr. Lawson, a renowned psychiatrist, came highly recommended. In the austere clinic, Martin spilled his fears, his experiences, his theories. Dr. Lawson listened, his face a calm mask of professional interest. Finally the doctor spoke. Martin, I believe you're experiencing a rare condition called Cotard syndrome or walking corpse syndrome. It's a kind of delusional psychosis where a person believes they or their surroundings are dead or don't exist. It's often accompanied by hallucinations and time distortion. Dr. Lawson's words hit Martin like a sledgehammer. He was the madman. The world was not crazy. He was. In the weeks that followed, Martin underwent rigorous therapy and medication. His perceptions began to stabilize, the world returned to normal. Or at least, what he understood as normal. The nightmare was ending. But the chilling realization of his own madness was a burden he would forever bear. Martin had thought he was the last sane man in a world gone mad. Instead, he was the lone madman in a world that was frighteningly sane. In the end, Martin O'Donnell's tale is a haunting reminder of the fragile line between sanity and insanity. A world that once felt familiar and safe turned into a place of horror and confusion. Not because the world changed, but because his mind did. The greatest horror, he learned.